Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Fitness Pride and Positives with Rochelle. So glad to be back with you today, folks, and I am excited to wrap up this Gym Leadership No-No series by highlighting from a confidence standpoint the what you do aspect. I know last week we talked about the who you are aspect of confidence and how important it is to know who you are, to be secure in who you are, because if not, you will be rattled just like the wind and you'll always be looking around for someone to define you. And that is certainly a recipe for a life of unhappiness. And last time I shared with you my painting that I did um, actually at Runner's Fit and so on uh, March 30th, uh, Brooks, you know, the athletic apparel company actually sponsored what they called Brush with Brooks. And so they had a, an instructor in, a painting instructor, if you've been to Painting with a Twist. And the name of this particular company or franchise was Painting Escapes. And so they had the instructor there. It's about an hour and a half. And, you know, all the canvas and all the everything is already there and ready. And so it's just about an hour and a half lesson of painting. So this is my masterpiece. <laughs> and why am I bringing this up again? I know I shared this last week. But, folks, there was a time in my life where I wouldn't have, speaking of confidence, and that's part of the, you know, the whole theme of this, the wrapping up this series, I wouldn't have had enough confidence to actually show this <laughs> to other people, especially, you know, on camera <laughs> in this type of scenario. But folks, again, this was the best I did, and I'm not a painter. And that's part of the reason why it's very easy when you're secure in who you are, you know who you are, hey, this was the best I could do. I'm not a painter. And so we all need to have that mindset. You know, yes, you want to expect that certainly, you know, if you're an accountant, you want to be on it. You want to be making things happen in the accounting realm. But if you're doing things that you're that you're not trained in, <laughs> that are not necessarily your strengths or something you've had a lot of exposure to, don't be afraid or don't be insecure about, and this would have been my thinking, what will people think? What are people going to say? This painting looks like a 15 or a 10 year old did it. Uh, but folks, this was the best that I could do, and it was so funny. You know, I mentioned that it was an hour and a half, and, and the instructor's assistant. I required several uh, instances of assistance. You know, she'd come over, and then they're like, you know, my tree's too big. And then at first, it was like black. <laughs> and she's like, your tree, your tree shouldn't be black. Your tree is actually supposed to be a dark green. So you have to mix in the black with the dark green, and it'll give you the color. So I had to rescue it. Um, and so, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of good experience. But, but again, in that situation, think about stepping outside of your comfort zone, doing things that you are not naturally talented or gifted in just for the experience. I had a wonderful time. It was a wonderful experience, but there has been a, been a time in my life where I've been like, oh my gosh, you know, this instructor's assistant keeps coming over here, correcting me or showing me this or showing me that, you know, and, and you know, if somebody, if somebody's sensitive to criticism, that would have just did the person in. But fortunately, we need to be secure, we need to be teachable, we need to be coachable, we need to be humble. Particularly in situations where people are trying to help us, even if it is in a group setting. So I just had to, to share this again. I know some people probably missed it last week, but this is an example. You got to know who you are. And that way you're not running around wondering what, which, what everybody's going to think about you. What's going to happen? Who are you? Just like the awesome classic song by The Who, you know. I really want to know. <laughs> you got to know who you are. You got to know who you are, folks. Accept yourself. Get your own approval. Be a person of purpose. And I assure you, life overall, and this is not just your leadership journey, but life overall, will, will become better than you could have ever imagined. But folks, on to this particular episode of focusing on the, the what you do aspect of confidence. And so this whole tying in this whole aspect of, of confidence of courage, of, 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 of being secure in who you are and your purpose. It is so important, so important. And this is a wonderful example. And folks, I've been, you know, I save, I save a lot <laughs> to be able to share on Fitness Friday episodes and the non-Fitness Friday episodes. And so this is Sports Illustrated um, from February 25th. And so there was an article and the title of the article is More With Less, More With Less. So it's highlighting less miles. Yes the former coach of the LSU Tigers. And I know what you're thinking, Rochelle, why are you always highlighting the Saints in LSU? Would you be surprised if I didn't do that? Of course you wouldn't. But essentially, folks, it was a wonderful article just highlighting the fact that I'm not sure if you've all heard the news, but Les Miles, Les Miles actually, after being fired from LSU, 
um, you know, a few years ago, actually took the head coaching job at Kansas. You know, to, so to go from a big time program to Kansas, and so now he's in rebuilding mode. I mean, there's not even rebuilding mode. He's he's truly it's been a long time, a many 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 years since they've been a serious national contender. But he is up for the challenge. And this is a very long article, but I just want to highlight here just this last paragraph, and I think it speaks volumes to confidence and knowing who you are, what you do, and the fact that when you are confident, you're willing to take challenges. You're willing to step up, be willing to take on challenges, regardless of what people are, may say, man, he's in his 60s. Why doesn't he just retire? He doesn't need the money. You know, this is going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be a lot of headaches. People will always criticize. People will always judge. We talked about that last time, but you got to get over it. You got to get over it. If you're over, if you're over 21, you got to get over. I mean, the fear of criticism and the judgment. People are going to judge us, particularly as leaders. People are going to judge you. People are going to judge me. People are going to criticize you. People are going to criticize me. But we got to, we got to get over it. And we got to move on. And so, as this 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 paragraph points out here, after Les Miles press conference on signing day, the coach is back in his office interviewing for a graphic design position on his staff. And minutes later, he leads an unplanned meeting to discuss the 2020 signing class. Stephen Bider, the special assistant to the head coach, bustles from the staff meeting to his office and back. Bider, 30, has spent the last year with Miles, helping him strategize for a potential return to coaching. While the outgoing staff still occupied the football complex, Bider and Miles huddled in a conference room in Kansas's athletic administration building assembling a staff. Before this year, Bayer only knew the actor and TV analyst Les Miles. Now, finally, he knows Les Miles, the coach. He's much more comfortable in this role, Bayer says. It's like riding a bike for that guy. It's like duck to water. This is why this guy was put on earth. See, purpose. When, when you're pursuing your purpose, when you know what your purpose is and you're securing that, is going to give you a level of confidence, a determination, a perseverance that you may not ever know otherwise. And I think Les Miles is a good example of that. A lot of people questioning his decision, questioning the viability, even with his leadership and coaching, of the Kansas, the Kansas football program. But he is up for the challenge. He is up for the challenge. And in another example here from Inc. Magazine, and I just had to share, I just had to share this one with you as well. This is a March, April, 2019 edition. And so, folks, this, this little blurb I'm going to highlight is from Ann Wojcicki, co-founder and CEO of 23andMe. And this is true whether you're, you're in a leadership role within the gym itself, you're a franchisee, it doesn't matter. But this speaks to leadership, leadership and confidence in leadership. Okay, it says, it's really hard to get something completely right. As a business leader, you have to be very comfortable being criticized and know that it's not about you. It's about learning how to be even better. And who wants to be in a static state? People tend to look at success and failure as black and white. For me, it's like you're always moving. I come from the science world. You're like an atom. You're constantly vibrating. Once again, very successful entrepreneur and uh, just highlighted that, okay? You gotta move forward. You gotta press past the, con the, the, the criticism. The judgment, you know, in some cases, the ridicule, the, the people second guessing you and doubting you. All right, you got to have enough confidence in yourself to proceed on, to keep on keeping on. All right, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter how good you think your gym is, your facility is. People are going to criticize you. People are going to judge you. Part of that's just human nature. Remember, a number of episodes I highlighted the fact and just the prevalence of the concept of negativity bias. And that is people to the general whole tend to, tend to see the negative, tend to view the negative in far, far greater instances than they do the positive. And so that's why your, your, your facility may have 101 strengths, but then the three weaknesses that it has, and those are the things that people capitalize on and then write perhaps negative reviews or whatever the case may be. So that is something that is going to happen. But, but once we're once we reach a level of maturity to just recognize that and understand, you know, people are people. They're going to judge. They're going to criticize. They're going to question. But you can't let it stop you. I don't care where you are. I don't care what type of role you're in. I don't care what the facility is, where it is. You know, it is going to happen because people are people. We have to understand that and have some empathy. 
You know, a lot of people are just running around comparing and pe- competing and comparing and, and wondering, you know, how they stack up, where do they stack up, if they don't, why not, what can they do, and whatever. And so we can't let that drag us down or question what we do during our fitness journey, during our leadership journeys, and certainly, you know, may not be the case. Um, outside of the fitness journey, I mean, it could, it could be happening in any aspect of your life. That's just people are people. You know, and this is something that was funny that actually happened. This was, I remember it, Monday, January 7, 2019. And this happened at the newest Shreveport, Louisiana location of Planet Fitness. The one on Yuri Drive. I was just, just so, I remain just so crazy about that, that location. That the matrix, mat- what I call a matrix-fied uh, location of Planet Fitness. Just a wonderful location. But anyway, I remember this just like it was yesterday. I'm getting off of a recumbent bike. Remember, it was the third from the, the center aisle. And I'm going to get some some a paper towel to get ready to wipe off my machine as I'm heading to my next cardio machine. And this this gentleman who's on the on the end of the aisle on the recumbent bike says, uh, "Young lady, come here, come here, young lady." And so then I said, "Yes, sir." Senior citizen had to be late 60s, early 70s. And then he says, "What are you doing here?" And I'm sitting here like, uh, working out. But anyway, um, long story short, the guy was like, "You know, you're already in shape." Why are you here? You don't need to be here. All right, you're making the rest of us look bad. And then I said, you know what, sir? You know, thank you. I appreciate it. But sir, don't compare yourself to other people. Just don't do that. You just focus on what you're doing. But was I offended? Did I feel judged? Would I feel criticized? No, because he's human. That's what people do. They go into those scenarios, especially in fitness centers, and run around and look around and compare themselves to whoever they see. All right, and there may have been a, yeah, there would have been a time, I don't know, 15 years ago, I would have been kind of like, man, you know, you know, why did he say that to me here? You know, maybe I am, maybe I don't need to be here. Of course I need to be here. There's a reason, I mean, 25 years I've been working out, (laughs) you know, come May 17th here, coming up very soon. And so you can't let, when people say to you, um, question, you know, cause you to question and doubt your own journey and where you are and whether you need to be there. It's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. So we've got to press on and keep on keeping on. I'm not going to let him or anybody else derail my fitness journey. But you've got to have that level of confidence, though, to to just shake stuff off like that and recognize, you know, it's the true problem. I don't need to be in the fitness center because I'm already in shape. Or is the real problem. He's insecure, comparing himself, and feels that that I'm making him and other people look bad in the gym. No, that's the real problem. (laughs) The problem isn't with me. You know, I'm just there trying to work out whatever, but the problem is with him. So you have to recognize, you kind of have to draw that line and have a barrier, and a mental and emotional barrier to recognize. Is that, What is the real problem here? Okay, and that's true in your case. It's wherever you are, wherever you're located. That is the nature of the human condition. More often than not, that's going to happen to you in some realm of life, particularly in leadership. So you got to just shake it off and keep on keeping on. All right, you got to do that. And so folks, especially from a leadership perspective, Not everything is going to go well. Not everything is going to be all right. Um, And so we have got to have the confidence and the courage, as I've mentioned before, to keep on keeping on. And you know I've alluded to the the wonderful book, Jim Collins, Good to Great. And we talk about driving the metaphorical bus, getting to the destination, the the, the destination success. You could just just say that. What, What took companies from being good to great? And so those three principles I highlighted from that are just a wonderful book. If you haven't read it, please read it. So riding the bus, you know, you're driving the bus, you got your people on, so it's important. Number one, you want to have the right people on the bus in terms of your employee, your staff. Number two, you want to have the right people in the right seats. And number three, you want to get the wrong people off the bus. And so this is actually a, an example that's really shocking, and I've, I've saved it on my phone here because I knew I was going to highlight it on, on some episode, and I think this is a really good fit here since I'm talking about confidence and leadership. And what happens when things don't go well, when, when you get fired, when you get terminated, when a lot of your members bolt to another, another fitness facility uh, in your area, whatever, what, whatever that looks like for you and your situation and your scenario, leadership isn't always pretty. And so it's important that, that we have some resilience and we be able to rebound. But this is an article here from CNN Business, the title of the article by Nathaniel Meyerson. And so this appeared Wednesday, March 13th, year of 2019. And the title of the article is Rite Aid CEO is out as company cleans house. All right. And so very quickly here, 
Rite Aid is shaking up its leadership ranks and slashing 400 jobs as the company struggles to adapt to changes in the retail and pharmacy industries. The drugstore chain said Tuesday that it will replace three top executives, including CEO John Stanley, who has led Rite Aid since 2010, as well as the company's chief financial and operating officers. Stanley will remain CEO until Rite Aid appoints a successor. And so there, there you have it. Rite Aid is replacing the CEO, CFO, and COO. <laughs> I mean, that is just, I mean, that, that type of leadership change, you know, all within the same time frame, is incredibly rare, certainly an outliner, uh, outlier, but that's an example. I mean, these public companies, these, these, <laughs> These companies that, you know, you got shareholders, you got these, these responsibilities, uh, they are no joke. And you've heard me allude to this, you know, the corporate fitness chains, uh, they are no joke. They will, they will make changes, they will, they will reduce hours of operation, whatever they need to do to maintain profitability and, and to sustain profitability, most importantly. But, but Rite Aid made that change. So when you think about that, you know, three top leaders, so that's going back to Jim Collins' book, Right A, they, they felt it was imperative at that moment to get three people off the bus. You know, that, that, that bus, that the right aid bus of, of leadership, three of them, the top three, gone. I mean, and that clearly sends a lot of messages. They're going to go in an entirely different direction. They didn't feel that keeping either of the three um, was viable. Um, but that's an example. So what happens when you get fired? You know, what happens when you get replaced? What happens when you get demoted? I mean, those type of things happen in leadership. And certainly there are lessons to be learned from that. You know, how much did you contribute? Were you truly the problem? Was the problem something you could have changed, you could have done better? Um, and so it's very important to objectively assess situations to determine, you know, what could have been done differently? Could anything have been done differently? Was this truly a blessing in disguise that you're now about to, to land that your dream job at a dream facility that's going to be a much better fit for you? And so there's always that, that notion of, of evaluating is this something that could have been done differently or not? Did you do the best you could? Were, were, were circumstances outside of your control? All right, those, those factors all need to be weighed as you're evaluating, particularly doing some type of quote unquote autopsy of, of any negative situation that may have happened on your leadership journey. And certainly there are lessons to be learned that you could certainly carry forward in your career. And, and it's certainly something that, you know, perhaps if it's some mistakes or, you know, just some leadership management of leadership deficiencies, certainly some lessons that can be learned that can you can certainly take to your next opportunity during the, during the next phases of your leadership journey and career. I mean, we're all learning, we're all growing, we're all developing. But, but being fired, being terminated, being, being demoted, being replaced, all of that, being downsized, that's just part of life. It's going to happen to everyone in some, some form or fashion. No one lives a perfect life. A perfect life does not exist. A perfect career does not exist. You know, the person who had a booming 37-year career with X company, and now all of a sudden they walk in and, and find out that, that the jobs are being outsourced. Or now they're going to technology now. That, that, that employee is now being replaced by technology, which is much cheaper and much more efficient. Whatever the case may be, it's happening day in and day out. And so we got to have the resilience and we've got to have the confidence to know that regardless of what negative ramifications and situations and consequences happen to us, experiences happen to us during our journey, we will be okay. We can pick up the pieces, we can move on, and we can keep on keeping on, but that certainly takes confidence. You know, if you define yourself by your job, by your title, by what you do, um, that's going to be hard because that, when, the, when the change happens, when the, when the termination, when the fire, when the layoff, the downsizing happens, when the you get replaced and you get demoted happens, your identity will be shaken because you place the whole weight of your identity in defining who you are on this title, on this job, on this salary, on this whatever the case may be, on this corner office with a nice view. And if something happens and all of a sudden you gotta move to the other office, you gotta move to a cubicle down, down, down the hallway, your identity is shaken. So we've gotta have firm, solid identities that are rooted in the right things not things that could change at a moment's notice. So, 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 so important, folks. And speaking of identity, and so well, this is actually something I've saved for a few years now. we got Pete Carroll here, the coach of the Seattle Seahawks, and this is actually from August 3rd, 2015. So if you remember the story, you know, the, the Seahawks lost the Super Bowl, and it kind of came down to one play, and so essentially 
you know, they, the, the media and, and Sports Illustrated in this particular instance certainly, you know, gave them some breathing room. This, this, this didn't appear until August. You know, the Super Bowl is held in February each year. And so, but it's just a wonderful article where he said, hey, you know what? That, that game, losing that game, losing it the way we did, did not define me. It's not going to define me as a coach, as a leader. And so just think about that. You've got millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people watching you. And that and, and that play and that, that game goes south very quickly. And then there you're, you're getting criticized, you're getting judged, you're getting ridiculed, you're getting doubted, you're getting second-guessed. Well, why is he a coach that he needs to be fired? Why is he, you know, whatever. All right, it happened to him, and it's going to happen to, 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 to you and I in some realm, form, or fashion. But we've got to recognize we can't let things define us. We cannot let things define us. We have to keep on keeping on, doing the good, doing the bad, and know, you know, when, when you're truly, again, and this goes back to purpose. I talked about that. You know, when you're securing your purpose, I talked about that last time. All right, you know, deep down, you can't let a play define you. All right, you can't let something, the one thing or two things or something define you. Okay, 200 of your members, members leave and go down the street to your competitor. All right, that should certainly open your eyes, <laughs> but you that shouldn't define you and cause you to get stuck and why did this happen? And my gym will never be the same. And, you know, just I feel like a wretched failure. And then for the next three years, you're just struggling because you can't shake off that those 200 members that have left. All right. Instead of learning the lessons from that, why did they leave? What can we do differently? Yada, yada, yada. And, and, and taking those lessons and, and, and enabling them to improve what you're doing. Some people just get stuck. They get defined. They, they allow negative experiences in life, certainly negative experiences in leadership to define them. Well, I don't have what it takes. Maybe I shouldn't be a general manager of this facility. Maybe I shouldn't be a trainer. Maybe I shouldn't be a group fitness instructor. You know, whatever. You know, we can't let negative experiences in life, in leadership and outside of leadership, define us. All right? They are growing opportunities. They're learning opportunities. Um, but we've got to take them as just that. Don't let them paralyze us and keep us stuck in life. We can't, we can't, we can't let that happen. But confidence is certainly something that is going to be required for that. And folks, as I'm nearing here uh, towards the end of this episode, I actually want to, after I discuss here, um, a question that I received, and I always certainly appreciate when people reach out with questions. Um, I'm going to highlight an exciting uh, clinical study that I'm actually going to be participating in with the University of Michigan, but I'll get to that in a second. But I want to highlight this question here that I received, and that is, Rochelle, do you ever, do you ever, do you ever give negative feedback? You know, we hear about all this positivity and just whatever. You know, this person obviously knows me. I'm a very positive person. Again, that whole negativity bias thing is not something that I struggle with where I'm just going to immediately focus in on negative. No, um, I'm, I'm very, very just by nature, very positive person, very upbeat, very optimistic uh, person. And so someone asked, you know, do you, do, what about negative feedback? Um, and the question is, do you ever give it? And my, my answer to that is yes, but very rarely. Um, particularly in non-professional situations where I'm not tasked with that, um, just in life in general. Um, yes, I do, but it is very, very rare. Um, and the reason for that is, and this is, and this is so true. And you've heard me mention it, you know, a few weeks ago where I talk about it, in the back of my mind. It's always there's a there's a loop playing. Rochelle, you've got options. Rochelle, you've got options. Rochelle, you've always got options. Um, and so for me to go through the whole rigmarole of trying to change the system, trying to change whatever. I just move on. I just, whatever. I just adapt in some cases if necessary and, and just recognize a weakness as a weakness or um, I just move on. Um, I just move on. Um, in a perfect example, and this is true even in the fitness industry, you know, when I go to different gyms and, and, and all the different types of facilities and all of that, um, very rarely, very rarely, almost never <laughs> do I point out things. Um, and this is a perfect example. And I highlighted the, I highlighted the, the painting that I did at, on March 30th. And so I'll give a, you know, a quick example of that. So before that Brooks running event, so that started at seven. Um, and so I went to, I made a decision, it was Saturday morning and I woke up that morning and I said, you know what, instead of going to the gym now, which is usually my early morning time, what I'm going to do is just go later and I'm going to go to a Planet Fitness location. I went to the seven mile location in Livonia. And so I said, you know what, that's like 3.6 miles away. It showed on my, on my uh, Google Maps. And I said, this would be perfect. I haven't been to that gym in a long time because, you know, the five-mile road location is certainly my default when I'm in Livonia and Northville. 
um, just a wonderful facility. I really, really, really like the Accordion and her team do an excellent job. Um, and that facility, that's, that location is really close to the, to the interstate, so it just works well for me. Um, and so, but I said, you know what, again, in the spirit of object objectivity, let me go to the Seven Mile location. I haven't been there in a while, whatever. Um, and I knew that late in the day, so I said, okay, I'm going to get there between about 4.30 and 5. So I got there a few minutes before 5, and I said, you know what, yes, this location, and I thought about it this morning, that location has the TVs. So I can tune in to ESPN, get caught up on the daily sports and news, and it's going to be great. And so walked in, and I noticed, yeah, they got two uh, you know, new treadmills. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. That's great. Hadn't been to that location since the NBA playoffs of 2018. So it's been a long time since I've been in there. Um, so I said, yeah, they got new treadmills. Okay, that's cool. So I head on over there to the, to the side of the gym where they have the, the cardio machines with the, with the TVs on them and hop on the first machine. And then I noticed too they've got they've got uh, remotes. I said, oh, this is cool. Now they got remotes and they've got the Velcro on the on the machines. Now you just kind of affix the remote. I said, this is cool. So I grab the remote, first machine. I see the blue light on the on the machine, so I could tell there's some type of receptivity, and so it's not working. And so then I get off that machine. Okay, whatever. It's a fluke. Whatever. This happens in gyms, but especially with those with machines, this is gonna happen. Get on the second machine, same thing. And I'm like, okay, this is this isn't happening. Um, so then I said, okay, third time has to be a charm. So then I get on the next machine and then I do it and it's still not changing channels. And I'm like, okay, now is something going on here? Is there something I'm missing? And so then I actually did, you know, which is commonly in, in gyms, you know, with no remotes, you just kind of do the up and down, the channel up and down. So I, I noticed that and then I, it was just taking too long and, and just whatever, you know, that, that the beginning, it's the beginning of my workout, I start out with cardio. That's what my passion is. I've always done that. Um, love, love, love cardio. So my, my workouts start with cardio. And so I, you know, with me being on three different machines, I couldn't allow myself to get frustrated <laughs> with, with trying to get my workout. Couldn't all of a sudden turn into me trying to get these TVs to work. Um, and so it was the third machine and I'm sitting there, you know, pressing it and I'm just like, you know what, this is not working. This is slowing me down, whatever. And so then two young ladies get on the, the two end treadmills and I said, okay, maybe they know what's going on. And so they get their machine going and I'm just going to ask them, you know, can you come over here and help me to figure this out? And so then I made the decision. I said, you know what, after about another 20 seconds, I said, you know what, I can't do this. I got to get moving. I got to, you know, this is slowing me down. Um, so then I'm walking by and then they're pressing buttons, looking at a black screen. And I'm like, <laughs> we'll see, they don't know either, whatever. And they weren't on their machines uh, very long. They had, they left there and went on over to, to the weight machine, the, the selectorized weight machines area. Um, so headed on over there, got on the treadmill and, and, and looked at the, and looked at the TV, the one of the, the regular big size TVs. And so it was great. Everything else was great, whatever. Uh, but that's an example. Like, you know, I was, my workout was not about to become, let me go over and let me find a staff member. Let me tell them about these things and see if they can help me. Cause all of a sudden that's a big rigmarole and that's cutting it to my workout time. Um, and I don't like to be slowed down. I don't like to deal with that kind of stuff. So it's just, let me move. Let me just change gears, get in front of a big TV and that'll be fine. Um, so that is me, you know, wonderful gym. You know, of course that was an experience and that happens in all types of facilities. And that's just kind of the risk and the challenge of machines that have TVs on them because sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work, whatever. That's just that's just a fact of life. So I just rectified it, got on a different machine, everything was cool, whatever, the, you know, the rest of the workout was great, you know. So that's an example where, hey, you know, just mentally I know, like don't go into that facility, yes, I'll be back, not a problem, but don't go into that facility expecting to watch TV in terms of having something that I want to see or whatever because there could be some inconsistency there of it working or not working, whatever the case may be. So that's an example. I didn't go, I didn't re tell, can you help me do this, whatever, whatever. No, I don't have time for that. <laughs> you know, I'm there to work out and I'm there to move on. And certainly something that ran through my mind is, you know, in LA Fitness, the newest LA Fitness in Metro Detroit, which opened in 2018, is literally folks within walking distance of that location. Um, and, I, and I could literally think, I mean, I was thinking like, man, with the de defensive pressure anyway of LA Fitness being that close to you, you know, LA Fitness, not all of their cardio machines, certainly most of their cardio machines have, have, have TVs. And I thought to myself, man, you know, plan it in this situation where you've got a competitive advantage, where you have this section of, of cardio machines with TVs on them, you cannot afford to have that controllable weakness where you've got TVs that aren't working right, you know, with the remotes and all this situation. You know, not with that major competitor, the number one rated, you know, uh, fitness chain, according to Club Industry Magazine, uh, for 2018 and certainly 2019, um, that competitor within walking distance um, with TVs and all of that on their cardio machines is standard and, and yours are struggling, you know, in that regard. So that certainly ran through my mind, but that is something that I, I, I just don't do. I'm there to work out, 
you know, when I when I left Planet Fitness in Novi, you know, I had some wonderful lessons. I'll always honor Nate Lucier, the general manager in that team. And certainly during the winter of this year, so earlier parts of this year, I actually had an opportunity to go back as a that was my snow day alternate gym. So I would go later in the day. Um, so recognize like uh, Nate's gone, the whole team is gone. Um, but certainly I I've, I've, I've just will cherish those folks, learn some great lessons, um, some great experiences. But that was an example. You know, I didn't sit down and try to change anything. Can you can you make the water hotter like it should be? No. I transferred my membership. I transferred that membership to, to the Commerce Michigan gym and have been very happy ever since. Um, so that is me. I mean, I don't complain powerhouse. I'm not going to sit down with the general manager and let's discuss this. No. I left. <laughs> and that's tr pretty much my trademark um, is where people are typically very surprised by my departures um, and resignations and stuff when I was in the corporate world because I'm going to be cool, calm, collected in a class act on the all the way up to my way out of the door. Um, so people don't see it coming because I'm such a positive person. But that's just, that's my trademark. You know, I don't, I don't complain. I'm not going through all that rigmarole. No, I'm just going to make adjustments if I need to be on a temporary situation if necessary um, or just find another location. And then that's just me. But yes, I do negative feedback, but very, very, very rarely um, do I do that. And so that's an example of, of, of what I do. You know, you gotta have the confidence to know that you always have options. You don't ever have to stay stuck in a bad situation. If you're not happy, if something's not working for you, then you can leave. There, there's other options, whether you realize it or not, but that's something that's a confidence issue. You gotta get, I, I just wanna just reemphasize this. I can't emphasize this enough. You got options, have options. Don't be afraid to use them. Don't be afraid to take advantage of them. You can't be afraid of change because they will certainly keep you stuck, folks. Um, and folks, lastly, want to wrap up this episode by highlighting a new study. I've got to pull up my email here. I'm actually going to be part of the MIPAC study, which is the University of Michigan School of Medicine. And I just wanted to quickly highlight something that they're essentially, in a nutshell, and I have medical sales, so I'm, I'm waiting for the study methodology, but I should see it and hear more about it when I actually have my first kickoff appointment uh, for this study on April the 30th. But so what I'm going to be doing here is I'll have more details, obviously, and I'll take you all on this journey with me. But I'm going to wear an Apple Watch and take my blood pressure daily with a separate cuff for up to 45 days. And so this is going to happen daily and then, of course, subsequently monthly and then quarterly for up to three years. And now for my very first kickoff appointment on the 30th, I have to donate a blood sample. Um, and so I have to have this kickoff meeting, which is gonna be about an hour, an hour and a half on April 30th. So that the role of technology, we've talked about technology, particularly around fitness trends. This is an example. I'm sure they wanna they want to measure the validity and the accuracy and the efficacy of a, an Apple Watch in terms of measuring and monitoring uh, blood pressure, um, and perhaps there's some other parameters, but I'll know more on after I have my kickoff meeting. But again, what is the role of technology? So folks don't necessarily have to walk around with a big you know, blood pressure cuff anymore. All right. Perhaps the, the Apple Watch, and this is why they're studying this, that's why they're refining the process, to say, can an Apple Watch do the same thing? And it's going to require a lot less hassle. It's going to be right there on your arm. So I am so excited to be a part of this study. Uh, for the University of Michigan. So folks, stay tuned. I look forward to sharing more. But remember, confidence in leadership is important, but it's also important in life. You gotta know who you are. You gotta work on knowing who you are, being secure in who you are, accepting yourself, strengths, weaknesses, flaws, all of that and all. All right, we're all imperfect human beings. We all have struggles. We all have problems, trials, tribulations, successes, all of that. But, you know, also the, the who you are, is important as relates to what you do. Because if you don't know who you are, you're gonna be running around doing everything somebody else wants you to do or quote unquote society wants you to do. And, and you just won't have a strong sense of self and direction, you'll have an aimless life, you'll be a very unhappy person. But also when the, when the inevitable adversities and challenges and obstacles and all of those things come your way in life, if you don't know who you are, it's going to affect what you do because you're gonna settle in life, you're gonna you're gonna have positions that are far beneath what your true potential is because you don't feel like you have what it takes to be a leader, to be a franchisee, all right, to be running the show, whatever the case may be, to be a group fit, to go from a group fitness class participant to an instructor, all right? That all takes confidence. Advancing in life in any form or fashion, certainly in the fitness world, takes confidence. 
We've got to be willing to press past the judgment, the criticism, the doubts, and all of that to know, to listen to our inner voice, that when we listen to it, will truly lead us in the right direction. But confidence is so important, folks, and I just challenge you, continue to learn, grow, and develop in this area, as I certainly do each and every day. And that's all we can do. Keep doing your best, keep learning, keep growing, and I assure you, great things are in store for all of us. So thanks so much for your time, folks. Until next time, I so appreciate your support. And remember, I am positively passionate about your success and leadership.